Hey guys, welcome to this session by K21 Academy. In this session, we are going to discuss about Kubernetes HCD backup and restore. Now let us take a quick glance at the agenda. Firstly, we will try to understand what is backing up and restoring the cluster. And then we will try to understand about cluster certificates. Post that, we will see how to upgrade QBDM masters. And then we will see how to upgrade QBDM workers. Post that, we will be performing a demo on backing up and restoring etcd. Post that, we will see how to take etcd snapshot and verify that. And then finally, we will see how to back up the certificates and key files. It would be helpful, especially when you are preparing for Kubernetes certifications. So there are three certifications in Kubernetes. First one is Certified Kubernetes Administrator, which is CKA. And then second one is Certified Kubernetes Application Developer, which is CKAD. And then third one is Certified Kubernetes Security Specialist, which is CKS. For the certification exams, you should have an understanding of Kubernetes HCD Backup and Restore. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, let's understand how do we backup and restore our cluster. That's the HCD component, which is one of the most important components in our cluster. And then how do we upgrade the cluster when we have to do uh, upgrade from one version to the other. So let's understand what is backing up and restoring the cluster, right? So all objects which are created, what is a Kubernetes object, a deployment, a pod, a service, whatever we have created till date, all types of resources are designated as Kubernetes objects. They get stored on the HCD. We are aware of it. And because that's the cluster configuration map, entire database of my cluster, I need to periodically back up my HCD data. And it is very important that if I want to recover my cluster at any point in time, when I have any disaster, I should have the backup of HCD to restore it back to the same state where, like where I want to go back, in whichever state I want to roll back to. So what we would do, we would take the snapshots of HCD and that would help us save the entire state of our Kubernetes cluster and we'll back up our critical information like certificates. So we would uh, have support from HCD itself, like how we have a kubectl command line interface to talk to our Kubernetes cluster. We have HCD CTL to take uh, actions or give execution of any API calls from the command line interface. So we can use etcd ctl commands and it helps us in taking a backup, taking a snapshot. And in case we want to restore from that snapshot, I have commands for that as well. So if you look over here, it just specifies which is the API version of etcd ctl we are using and it gives etcd ctl. It says take a snapshot and save it with this name. So the name of the output snapshot would be snapshot.db. And because it needs to take the snapshot of the entire cluster configuration, it should be authorized to do that. So it uses its certificates and keys associated with it so that it has says that, hey, I have the authority to execute this snapshot creation process. It authenticates itself using those CA certificates and the keys and goes ahead and takes a snapshot. Once you have the snapshot, if you want to restore from that snapshot, you can quickly restore as well using the restore command. But one more important thing that we need to back up in our cluster is the certificates. There are a lot of certificates in the initial creation of our cluster itself. There is a CA authority which is inbuilt, which has created the certificates. And there are a lot of certificates. There are client certificates related to admin, the kubelet, the controller manager, the kube proxy, the scheduler, etcd. Everyone has their own client certificate. And the server, which is the server API server, that's like a master for us. And we all are clients. We always go and say what we have to do we go and like request to the API server. So API server has the server certificates and all the other processes have the client certificate. And whenever we have to do a inter-resource communication, 
If you would have seen, we already had a default service account. We had created service account in um, case of a uh, few of the components in the past when we wanted to create a user in our back and all, we saw that there has to be a service account for it. So we have service account key pairs as well with which one resource is authenticated by the other resource that also we need to back up. And these all files are there in the respective servers. We need to take a backup of the entire slash etc Kubernetes PKI folder and have all the keys saved. So when we want to keep the cluster snapshot ready, we should actually back up the entire certificate folder as well, so that when we restore from it, we should be able to get back our cluster and should be able to communicate in that cluster too. So that was ab uh, about taking a backup and creating a restoration using the etcd. Here, if I want to upgrade the clusters, the nodes in the cluster, we start with the master node in fact. So we would first upgrade the master node and then slowly we would upgrade one one worker node at one point in time. So we would first decide which version I want to upgrade to. And you would be upgrading the control plane nodes one by one. So you would be first upgrading the cube ADM component and we would download the latest versions of the software, but we would, before to that, we would actually plan how to do an upgrade. And there is a command to do a planning for that, which is like kubeadm. We have set up our entire cluster using kubeadm tool. So we would run this plan command. It will give us which version we can upgrade to. It understands that I can go from 1.18.2 to 1.18.6. And here you can't jump from one version to another without uh, skipping some version, I would say. So you can't skip few versions in between and think my cluster will upgrade to any latest version. No, that would never happen. You have to roll out from one version to another. In case you have seven versions in between, then you will have to roll through the seven versions and then come to the latest one. So you do a up upgrade plan. It tells us which version of the software it will upgrade to. You download those softwares. When those softwares are up to date, you download the kubeatm, the kubelet, and the kubectl versions, the latest version which the plan has suggested. Then you go ahead and apply it. Once you're applying the changes, that is when the nodes are getting updated. And once we had understood that whenever we are doing an upgrade type of activity, it is actually draining out what is running apart from the daemon sets and then slowly it will bring back that node into action, which is like the uncordon activity right here also it does that. And after that kubeadm is upgraded, we would go ahead and update our kubelet and the kubectl. And if any other nodes are there, with the apply command, our master node is well and good. Now we have to move to our worker nodes to upgrade them. So we would do a kubeadm upgrade on each of the nodes. Let's see how do we upgrade the worker nodes. So we have to upgrade all the worker nodes, but we would do them one by one. We would first train them, ignore the daemon sets. Then we would say that upgrade this particular node. So kubeadm upgrade worker node one, it'll go ahead and upgrade the worker node one. Kubeadm is upgraded. We would upgrade the kubelet and kubectl ourselves, and then we would restart the kubelet because that is daemon type of process. We got to restart that. And then we would go ahead and uncordon the node so that we come back into action. So drain command, which is there, in case you have not run cordon before it, it would cordon and drain. It'll do two in one activity. And finally, we will have to uncordon it so that we come back into action. Otherwise, that node is not considered in the cluster as ready, right? So, and finally, when we have done uncordon, you can go ahead and do a kubectl get nodes and look, the, the status of the nodes are showing up as ready. So etcd has its own etcd ctl command line interface to interact with etcd. We would first download the etcd binaries so that we have the etcd ctl tool with us. So it is a tar.gz file which I have downloaded from github.com. 
I'll just go ahead and untar it and you will have to place that in a location in user uh, this local bin path. So I'm moving all the files which got copied or which got tarred, untarred with this particular thing. So I have a folder created with this. If I show you, there should be a folder created with this particular name. Yep, this is the one. This is the particular folder. And in this folder, all the files are kept which are needed. So I'll move that to user local bin. All the files which are there in that particular path, I'm moving it to user local bin. Now let's see the command which helps us to take a snapshot. So etcdctl, we are talking about which API version of the CLI command which we are using. We are using sudo obviously. And etcdctl snapshot save is the command to save a snapshot. We are giving the file name for what would be the name of the snapshot when it gets created. We are using the certificates and key so that we authenticate ourselves while doing this action so that it can take the snapshot of the entire uh, ed CD. So here we are creating a file called the snapshot.db. Let's do this. So these are a few of the keys which we are taken. If you see the CA certificate, which is present in slash etc kubernetes, the etcd server certificate and the server key file. All those are used and with this it would create a snapshot.db. Let's do ls-lrt and here is the file which is created snapshot.db. There is a way to depict you can check the snapshot status but you will have to add this particular string in front of this. Yeah. So you can check the snapshot status and you can write that in a uh, table format if you want. So if you give hyphen hyphen write and you say hyphen out equals to table, it will write it in the form of a table if you see here the snapshot. So I'll pick this and I'll execute this command. It should be double hyphens write hyphen out equals to table and you say snapshot status. So let's do that and it should show us in the table format. Here it gives the size and all, what would be the size of our etcd snapshot which has been taken. So with this, the snapshot of the etcd is taken but there is another folder from wherein we picked up these keys and we had discussed that these keys and certificates are very important ones. So we are creating a tar file out of this and we are naming it as etcdtar.gz. This particular file folder or the tar file will have all the keys and certificates uh, tarred inside it. So let's execute that. Whatever is there in PKI etcd, that would get tarred. So these two things are pretty important. And whenever we want to restore, we will have to pick up these files and go to our cluster and untar these files and place these files over there. So this was all about how to take a snapshot of your etcd and how to save the certificates and key in the form of a tar.gz file. That was our expert in Kubernetes. Now, if you want to learn more and get certified, then sign up for the free class of Kubernetes certification of your choice. For certified Kubernetes administrator free class, please visit k21academy.com slash kubernetes02. For certified Kubernetes application developer, please visit k21academy.com slash kubernetes dev02. For certified Kubernetes security specialist free class, please visit k21academy.com slash kubernetes sec02.